Welcome to FutureCast. This is all about attention. So thank you so much for your attention. Uh, I'm going to be spending the next few hours with you. And what you'll find is that I'm going to go back and forth between sitting here in the studio in Redding, California, and uh, just talking to you about the state of attention and the future of attention. We're going to uh, focus on uh, seven different spheres of influence today. Uh, we'll be talking about the influence uh, and attention that people are trying to get in the spheres of art, of news, of philanthropy, of family, of business, education, government. And we'll basically have that broken down into like uh, four minute sound bites. I'll be with my friend Bryant Haquez, uh, who's a local here in Reading and uh, my marketing director. And he'll be sitting here with me on the couch. And let's be having these really short four minute conversations together about the state of attention. Uh, and I just wanted to welcome you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, what you just saw was me and Nolan. He is the head of research for Coindesk, which puts on the consensus event that I went to two weeks ago in New York City. This is the largest uh, event that happens in the blockchain, distributed ledger, cryptocurrency, NFT, uh, decentralized space, right? There's many names for the same thing. It's this third-party verification system that will, in many ways, automate uh, the world, hold technology, government, and people accountable, and force trust. Uh, we see the first iteration of this with different cryptocurrencies and whatnot. And so I went out to New York City. I did about 100 interviews in New York City at Consensus. And one of my favorites was the one that you just saw. That was with Nolan. And we walked all through the second and third floor of uh, that convention center. We walked through the expo uh, hall. And what's amazing is that was live streamed. Uh, so we were actually uh, able to live stream wirelessly this conversation. And I intend to do that again tomorrow here in Reading on the Sundial Bridge. Uh, so I have found that over the course of the last couple of years, as I've really gotten more and more intentional about live streaming, that we have gotten more creative about the innovative approach that we've taken as a team. Uh, I am just the person that is like a cheerleader. Like, come on, guys, we can do this. Like, we can go live. We can get people's attention. We can influence them for uh, ourselves or for different products or services uh, that we want to tell people about. And also just for the sake of pushing the boundaries, like how far can we go with this stuff? And so in just a moment, you're going to see a video of Bryant Hawkes and myself. He is my co-host and my friend today. And this is from a couple months ago. We were at the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco. It was at Bradley Met Rock's event, the Voice of the Car Summit, where we launched VoiceFirst.tv. And it's our interview there, a chance for you to get to know Bryant. Before we get started today, I hope you enjoy this video. My name is Ian Utili. This be like this is the NASDAQ morning. Entrepreneurial Center, and we are having the Voice of the Car Summit. I'm here with one of uh, my friends that I consider as a leader, as a brander, a storyteller, a marketer, a biz dev person, uh, you name it, he makes things happen. Uh, he also does a lot of training. Maybe he'll talk a bit about that. But as we're looking at like new industries, like voice tech in cars, one of the biggest things in my opinion is storytelling. So I was thinking to myself, what great storyteller do I know that teaches other people how to tell stories that could maybe end our uh, live stream in the broadcast studio with some insight on how should startups or even huge companies like Google and Amazon best tell their story. Brian, thank you for joining me. Thanks, Ian. The floor is yours. I'm here to listen and learn. Okay. Well, teaching is what I like to do most of all. Um, so I'll do my best. I am the founder of a company called Metaphor. And the reason I named my company Metaphor is because Metaphor is a split-second story. So metaphors are like thinking partners for our brain because they help us understand complex ideas in a split second. Right. And so what I do is I come in and I teach companies, mostly in the tech space, mm -hmm. how to introduce products through storytelling, but I teach them how to tell split-second stories. Yeah. Because as we know, attention is a rare commodity, right. and we can't use the same storytelling methods that are used in Pixar or a movie theater or a Shakespeare play because 
they have the luxury of having a two-hour captive audience who wants to hear what they have to say, and we're introducing products where we have to earn the attention of our audience, and they haven't. For the technology behind voice technology, you can say, uh, voice is the greatest uh, social servant that has ever been engineered because it can meet anywhere where they're at, regardless of their location or the language that they speak or a disability or um, regardless of where they're at in life. It can meet them and help them become a part of society, helps them become more productive. Um, and in a second, you can explain the value or the problems that are being solved and you don't need a long commercial, mm -hmm. right? Um, or maybe you're a consumer product and you want to be more exciting and you're saying uh, voice is a tsunami of convenience. Um, so whatever it is, you always start with the audience in mind. But I think, um, personally, I believe storytelling is the most effective way to capture attention and shift perceptions and create the most amount of um, change. In terms of changing perspectives or even user behavior, it can create the largest amount of change in the shortest period of time. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, when people come to you to learn about storytelling, mm -hmm. um, how would you approach it if it's a quick cup of coffee? Sure. Compared to cut, they're coming to one of your multi-hour or couple of day training seminars. Yeah. If you only have a short period of time, what are you really trying to communicate to a marketing executive or to sure. a startup founder? Yeah. Um, so my job is to study how the human brain interacts with stories. Um, and what we found is that the stories that capture the most amount of attention are stories of transformation, where somebody is overcoming a, um, an objection or an obstacle. There's some kind of change. Another split second story is a from to. So like going from um, homeless to Harvard or from uh, revolutionary to evolutionary. Um, but the reason why those are interesting and the reason why they work is because you craft a brand story based off of your understanding of the changes or the impact that your audience is looking to see in their life. Um, so when I sit down with somebody, I just start to ask questions like, what are the pain points um, in your market? What are the needs of your consumer base? What are their unfulfilled needs or desires? What's stopping those desires from being um, realized right now? Or even from a perception standpoint, right? Like, why isn't the entire world um, knocking at your front door? Like, what are the perceptions or the objections? Or, like, how do people feel? Are they skeptical? Are they um, just not quite sure what you're doing yet? Do we need to take them from complexity to clarity? Whatever it is, it really starts with the audience. Welcome to the Attention Summit. This is a future cast. My name is Ian Utili. I'm here with my co-host, uh, Brian Taquez. And uh, you just saw a video of the two of us, and that video was inside the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco, California. That was Bradley Metrock's event called the Voice of the Car Summit. We had a great time there. We launched the uh, voicefirst.tv um, new broadcast. And so what we're gonna talk about right now is art and entertainment, and it's a state of attention. So, Brian, thank you for joining me. Thank you, Ian. Welcome to the couch here at the Futurecast studio. Uh, let's talk about the state of attention for art and entertainment. Uh, we met because you were, at the time, um, the director of marketing and business development for Bethel Music, which has been right. an incredibly successful organization in so many ways, and one of those ways is getting people's attention and influencing them. Yep. So, state of attention for art and entertainment. Tell me your thoughts. 